You can be a full-blown ninja that doesn't use any sort of ninjutsu or genjutsu, aka in the D&D world, magic. And you can even find a way to unlock the eight gates that Rock Lee is known to be able to access in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So let's go ahead and build that ninja from the Hidden Leaf Village that can only use Taijutsu, Rock Lee from Naruto. First things first, we gotta pick a race, and of course we're gonna pick human. And to give us some more flexibility, we're gonna choose human variant. We're gonna save that feat for just a little bit, because we're gonna use it to recreate opening one of the gates. But just know that you get it right away. You also get access to a skill when you choose this race, so we're gonna choose sleight of hand. Because even though you can't use certain jutsu, you'd still know how the hand signs work. Then when it comes to a background, I wanna keep a consistent theme amongst most of my Naruto builds, and you're part of the Hidden Leaf Village. So we're gonna choose Faction Agent, as in the faction you're part of is the Hidden Leaf Village. This gives us skill proficiency in Insight, as well as one other skill from a selected list that we get to choose from. So we're also gonna grab Perception. Now it's time to choose some starting stats. We're gonna min-max this a bit, and Rock Lee is super nimble. So we're gonna max out our Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom, meaning that we have to dump our Strength, Intelligence, and Charisma. Then we have two points left over from our Racial Bonuses. So we get to put one point into Dexterity and one point into Wisdom, bringing them both to 16. Now it's time to choose a starting class, and it should be absolutely no surprise if we're avoiding magic, but we need plenty of hand-to-hand -hand combat, we're gonna go with a Monk. When you take your first level in Monk, you get access to simple weapons and short swords, you get saving throws and strength and Dexterity, and you get to choose two skills. You are a ninja, so we're definitely gonna grab stealth, as well as acrobatics, just to make sure we have some sort of physical skill that relies on our dexterity. Then, at first level of monk, you get unarmored defense. So when you're not wearing any armor or wielding a shield, your armor class equals 10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your wisdom modifier bringing it to a very respectable 16 right at first level. Also at first level, you get martial arts. So now you can do plenty of punching and kicking, and you can use dexterity instead of strength for all of your attacks that use your unarmed strikes or any of your monk weapons. Additionally, the damage dice for your unarmed strikes is now a D4 but that levels up as you level up in Monk. And if you want to, any Monk weapon attacks that you make can also be replaced with this damage die. And finally, when you use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a Monk weapon on your turn, you can make one additional unarmed strike as a bonus action. Then at second level of Monk, you get access to Key, and this is gonna be your access to Tai Jutsu for the most part. You have a number of key points equal to your level in Monk, and you can spend them on things like Flurry of Blows. So instead of just making one unarmed strike as a bonus action, now you can spend some Key and you use Flurry of Blows to make two attacks as your bonus action. Additionally, you can spend one key point to access Patient Defense, allowing you to take the Dodge action as a bonus action on your turn, or you can spend one key to access Step of the Wind, allowing you to take the Disengage or Dash action as a bonus action on your turn, and doubling your jump distance for the turn. And spending your key on these things feels like enhancing yourself slightly. So I'm gonna say that this is the first way you open one of your gates with the gate of opening, releasing your mental inhibitions and kind of increasing your overall abilities a little bit. Additionally, at second level of monk, you get unarmored movement. So now your speed is increased by 10 feet while you're not wearing any armor or wielding a shield. And this bonus does increase as you level up in monk. Then at third level of monk, you get access to deflect missiles. So if any projectile comes at you, you can possibly block it or even catch it out of the air and throw it back at your enemy, which we can actually think of as the third gate, the gate of life, because the chakra released from this energy does tend to create a buffer zone around the user. I know this means we're skipping the second gate, the gate of healing, but we'll kind of circle back to that one in a second. Also at third level of monk, you get to choose a monastic tradition, otherwise known as a subclass. And Rock Lee is known for using a particular fighting style, because he happens to have a super low tolerance to alcohol. So we're gonna choose Way of the Drunken Master. This gives us proficiency with the performance skill and brewer's supplies. But more importantly, it gives us access to the feature Drunken Technique. So whenever you use Flurry of Blows, you automatically get the benefit of the Disengage action. And your walking speed is increased by 10 feet until the end of your current turn. So you can just run around really fast, punching the crap out of people without worrying about a single attack of opportunity. And not only does this fighting style work, it also works to replicate the fourth gate the Gate of Pain. This is known to increase the user's speed. Then at 4th level of Monkey, you get access to an Ability Score improvement, so we're gonna go ahead and boost up our Dexterity by 2 points, and you get the feature, Slow Fall, so you can do more cool ninja landings. But there's also an optional feature at 4th level, and this is gonna work perfectly for the second gate that we skipped over earlier. 
the Gate of Healing, because the feature is called Quickened Healing. It allows you to spend two key points to roll the martial arts die, and you regain hit points equal to the number you rolled plus your proficiency bonus. Then at fifth level of Monk, you get a whole bunch of stuff. Most notably, your martial arts die increases from a 1d4 to a 1d6, and you can strike more times because you get access to extra attack. And when you do hit, you can hit so hard that it stuns your enemy with the other feature that you get, Stunning Strike, which is a very powerful tool to have in your arsenal, allowing you to spend one key point to attempt to stun your enemy. And with all of this improved punching ability, I would say that that's like unleashing the next gate, the Gate of Limit. Then once you get to 6th level of Monk, the bonus you get from Unarmored Movement goes from 10 feet to 15 feet, and you get Key Empowered Strikes. So just in case that Gate of Limit didn't feel like it was setting in well enough, your punches are so strong that they now count as magical, really solidifying opening this gate. Additionally, at 6th level of Monk, you get another feature from your Way of the Drunken Master, Tipsy Sway, which has two unique bonuses. You can leap to your feet, so when you're prone, you can stand up by spending 5 feet of movement rather than using half of your overall movement speed, and you get access to Redirect Attack. So if a creature misses you with a melee attack roll, you can spend one key point as a reaction to cause that attack to hit one creature of your choice other than the attacker, as long as that creature is within five feet of you, which really feels like the core idea of what the Drunken Master can pull off. And just to add to that evasive ability, at seventh level of Monk, you get access to the feature Evasion, making you way better at deck saves, possibly ignoring all damage that you might take from a deck save. Additionally, at this level, you get Stillness of Mind, so you can use your action to end one effect on yourself that's causing you to be charmed or frightened. Then at 8th level of Monk, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two more points, maxing it out. Then at 9th level of Monk, you get another boost to your unarmored movement, so you gain the ability to run along vertical surfaces and across liquids without falling in, which is definitely a core ability of most ninja. And just to improve that unarmored movement even more, at 10th level, the bonus you get from unarmored movement goes from 15 feet to 20 feet, and at 10th level, you get purity of body, making you immune to disease and poison. Poison. But I would say that you can probably ignore some aspect of that considering you're the way of the drunken master, so poisoning yourself with alcohol might be a little different. Then at 11th level of Monk, your unarmed strikes get boosted from a D6 to a D8, and you get another feature from way of the drunken master, Drunkard's Luck. So you always seem to get a lucky bounce just at the right moment. So when you make an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw, and you have disadvantage, you can spend two key points to cancel the disadvantage on that roll. And I know it's been a while since we've gotten any of the gates, but you're going to have to wait a little longer. Just like how Rock Lee kind of doesn't access most of the gates until he's in adulthood, so we're just going to say that this is his growing up phase. Then at 12th level of Monk, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and increase our wisdom by two points, which helps plenty of our monk stuff, especially our armor class. Then at 13th level of monk, you get Tongue of the Sun and Moon. So since you're in an anime and you're going to be dubbed into a lot of languages, now you can speak and understand every language. Then at 14th level of monk, you get a little faster, boosting your unarmored movement bonus from 20 feet to 25 feet, and you get Diamond Soul, giving you proficiency in every single saving throw, which is frankly a very powerful ability. Then at 15th level of Monk, you get Timeless Body, so you can't be magically aged, even if that does rarely come up in D&D. And then at 16th level of Monk, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and max out our wisdom, bringing it to 20, and bring our armor class to 20 as well. And then at 17th level of Monk, you get another feature from your Way of the Drunken Master, Intoxicated Frenzy. So now you gain the ability to completely overwhelm with the number of attacks that you can pull off against a group of enemies. When you use your Flurry of Blows, this feature makes it so you can make up to three additional attacks with it, meaning that you're making a total of five Flurry of Blows attacks. The only caveat is that each one of those attacks has to be against a different target. But with your ability to zip around the battlefield, that should be pretty easy. And you still have two normal attacks on top of that meaning that you can make a total of seven attacks, and three of them can be against the same person, but the rest just have to be spread out. And this is like finally opening the sixth gate, the gate of view, because the whole concept of this gate is that you can attack insanely fast. In the anime, it makes it so you're punching so fast you can actually create friction producing flames, 
but we're just gonna say you're punching really freaking fast. Then you only have two more gates to worry about, and we're gonna tackle the seventh gate, the Gate of Wonder, right now. Because this gate makes it so a single punch hits really hard, and it even creates a pocket of compressed air. So we're gonna do this in two ways. First off, at 17th level of Monk, your unarmed strikes already get boosted from a D8 to a D10 which is the strongest punch you can pull off as a monk. But we're gonna boost it even further because we still have that feat that we haven't used yet. Well, technically you got it right at first level when you started the character. We're playing with it now, so at least I had some way to keep you watching a little longer for the algorithm because we're gonna take the feat Crusher. This feat allows us to get one more point into either our strength or constitution modifier. And we had an odd number in constitution anyways, so this is really gonna help us by bringing our constitution to 16 and playing with the idea that a single punch can hit that much harder. When you score a critical hit thanks to this feat, you hit so hard that it throws your enemy off balance. So scoring a critical hit makes it so all attack rolls against that creature are made with advantage until the start of your next turn. And just to add to that a little extra, this feat also gives you the ability that once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, which all of your punches deal bludgeoning damage, you can move that creature five feet to an unoccupied space, provided that target is no more than one size larger than you. And I definitely wanted to get that gate in first because at 18th level of Monk, you get two physical boosts in crazy ways. So we can play this up as the eighth and final gate, the Gate of Death. Your unarmored movement bonus goes from 25 feet to 30 feet, making you that much faster. So your overall movement speed at this point is 60 feet, which is pretty darn fast in D&D. &D. And if you do something as simple as using your flurry of blows, your walking speed is increased by another 10 feet, bringing it to a total of 70. But more importantly, you get the feature Empty Body. So you can spend four key points to become invisible for one minute. And during that time, you also have resistance to all damage except for force damage. And considering you're pretty much supposed to die after accessing the 8th gate, reducing the user to ash, you can kind of play this up by you turning invisible as in you're erased from existence. But in D&D, &D, you don't have to actually die from it, so at least you can keep playing. But being invisible is actually pretty darn powerful because that means for all of the insane amount of attacks that you have access to, as long as whoever you're fighting doesn't have some sort of true sight ability or the ability to see you in some other way, all of your attacks are going to be at advantage. So it is pretty darn powerful, especially when you factor in having resistance to pretty much all types of damage except for one. The other ability that Empty Body gives you is that you can cast Astral Projection by spending eight key points, but that doesn't really fit with the character. I just felt like it was necessary to mention it. Then at 19th level, I was tempted to do a multi-class, but it just felt fitting to complete this character with a full-blown monk build. So at 19th level, we're going to take our last ability score improvement and use it to get a feat. And Rock Lee is one tough son of a gun. So we're going to take the feat, tough, giving us two extra hit points per level of this overall build. Then at 20th level of monk and last level overall, you get access to the feature, perfect self. So if you roll initiative starting combat and you're all out of key points, you automatically regain four key points. Points. I know this build was pretty straightforward, but I've been wanting to build Rock Lee for a while. He's one of my favorite Naruto characters. And I just got back from Gen Con, so I was a little burnt out, so I wanted something a little more straightforward to build. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below. And if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below. Just like all of these incredible people, especially my player character patrons, Jensen Santiago, Mugen, Elisa Martinez, Anthony McDonald, Panda Milkshake, Alistar Nix, Ted Z, Digimit, Andrew Nobles, Melinda's Robinson, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Viral Naravar, Kesta, The Dino 21, and Benjamin. Then going above and beyond that are the folks I play D&D with. Daniel Sweeten, Conman Ziak, Nathaniel Sims, Sai of Versiety, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Braden Aldridge, Daniel Galvin Michael, Eric Wade, Salvador, and Kilo Kilo. Then, going above and beyond anything I ever imagined, is my god-tier level patron, Gamesteak. He helps me more than I could have ever expected, so a special thank you to him. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as good old bushy brows, Rock Lee from Naruto in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition.